Hello guys, today I'm looking at the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch number 08 orange line Han Solo figure. This figure comes with a whopping 8 accessories and came out with the same price point of the $19.99. This figure stands a little at about 6 inches tall as shown there or 15 and a little centimeters. So it scales well. It may be a little slightly tall in comparison to other figures, but that's probably just the head sculpt's a little tall and big itself. But now onto the actual figure. This figure comes with a whopping eight accessories if you count both sets of hands, and we'll go over those first here. First, we'll pop these hands off. As you can see, they pop off really quite nicely. Well, the one did. There we go. And now we can look at the sets of hands here. First, we have these sets of gloved hands, which match when he was piloting the Falcon, or piloting the guns at least, on the Falcon. And they are really well painted, really well sculpted. The strap is really well done on there. All the detailing is really nice. All the paint is very clean. And we also have his whole, his gun holding hand here. Or piloting hand, you can say. And then on his regular flesh tone hands, we have the exact same sculpts, almost. Again, we have the proper gun holding hand with the trigger finger setting out there. And then we have this more whoops, odd open palm, like almost waving high hand, which I'm not quite sure why they included this, but it's a nice hand nonetheless. And really, it's nice to get four hands with a Black Series figure, as we usually don't get interchangeable hands. Now we also get included two different holsters. We get his classic Han Solo holster, which includes a nice strap here to detach the gun from. You got to pop up the small joint here and you get his classic pistol out. The pistol has really good detailing on it. It features silver on the nozzle on the nozzle there as well as brown on the handle and then also some nice silver detailing all over in the form of dry brushing. So it's a really well painted accessory and the belt also features a lot of good paint ap operations. You have silver, you have blacks, you have a little bit of blue and it's overall given this nice dark brown wash. So the belt is also great. Next we move on to his Stormtrooper belt, which he's seen wearing in the Death Star. Stormtrooper belt is a lot less great when it comes to detail, but it really didn't need all the detail that the other had. It. Unfortunately it's cast in this weird brown color, I believe it's the same as this belt, for whatever reason rather than the white. So the white's a little bit off, but it features pouches, features nice, and it also features a nice holster for his Stormtrooper blaster. As you can see there. Then we have his Stormtrooper blaster which is unfortunately all just cast in black as almost all were at the time. So there, now we can move on to the actual figure here and we'll attach his classic look onto him first. You can see here, hands just pop right on. There we go. And the hold and the belt has this small joint, well, plug-in feature that you have to pop off here. If I can get it, there we go then you have to ride up the leg strap around his leg, so take it, if I can get around the, there you go, ride this up, it's a tight fit, which it should be, rather than it hanging super loosely there, and then we can attach Han Solo's classic belt, if I can get it here, <laughs> and there we As you can see, holster fits really nicely. Fits as though it was perfectly meant for the figure and not even interchangeable or swappable at all. It hangs nice, the strap is really nice rather than being a floating strap. It's really nicely done. The articulation on the figure is also nicely done. We have your classic ball joint with the additional hinge, ball jointed shoulder, ball jointed elbow, ball jointed wrist on both sets of hand, ball jointed torso, ball jointed hip, swivel thigh, double jointed knee, and then finally your rocker ankles. So this figure features all the articulation you've gotten really to used to. And it holds all the accessories really well. As you can see here, the pistol hand perfectly fits the pistol, perfectly accommodates it so he can shoot Greedo or whatnot as he wishes. The paint apps on this figure are very clean, though the neck area could have done a little better to capture the skin tone and fade to the sides here. The striping on the boots is well done. It's even the part of the sculpt. As you can see, it's a little bit of a raised part there, if you can make that out. And the boots are, ca are painted in a nice glossy black, as they should be. 
though this figure doesn't really have a whole lot of paint job outside from the basic colors here that they have blotched on, it does well and looks quite nice. My biggest really complaint of this figure is definitely the head sculpt. Though it looks like Han Solo, it looks a lot too cartoony for really all the rest of Black Series figures. For whatever reason, they went for a really almost characterized look. The hair is too big, the eyes, the chin's too big, nose is a little too big. It almost looks like a caricature of Harrison Ford rather than him himself. I would have preferred had we gotten a little more realistic of a head sculpt, but it worked well in the line at the time. Now I'm going to take the belt here and switch out with the Stormtrooper one, so I'm going to cut quick. And there we go. And as you can see, Han Solo can be seen here, wearing just the Stormtrooper belt. And if you really tried, you could get the Stormtrooper belt over his regular holster as well, if you don't want to have to have all the parts lying around on your shelf. And he can also hold the Stormtrooper blaster quite well. It's not quite as perfect, his finger doesn't quite make it to the, to the trigger as it should. But I'd rather have his hand work for the storm, the, his regular blaster rather than the Stormtrooper one. So overall, this figure is fairly insane when it comes to accessories, especially when you compare it to today. And it's because of the accessories and really the ni how nice they are with the good paint on the Han Solo blaster, the nice interchangeable hands, and how good the paint is on the belt. Though the figure lacks a little bit in dry brushing or washes on the base of the figure, overall it doesn't take too much away from this figure, so I'm going to give this figure a 9 out of 10. This figure was really great for the time, and still is really great. The head sculpt looks a little dated for the time, especially when you compare it to the new photo tech ones, but still, for being released in the second wave, Hasbro was really starting off with very high-end figures, especially at the $20 price point. And it's because of this that this figure is very good, and I believe with its 40th anniversary release, I would definitely recommend picking this up. I believe he goes loose for around $25 to $30, so he's very reasonable for the cost, and really a great figure. Thank you for watching.